So let's have a quick look at a quilting motif. If you're new to free motion quilting, or even if you've been free motion quilting for a while, it's always good to have some extra ideas and motifs in your toolbox. Um, and one of the ones that I use most often is ripple quilting. It's a really good practice to do this to improve your free motion quilting. So all I've done on my whiteboard is to draw some parallel lines. I'm going to work between those lines. If you haven't got a whiteboard and some whiteboard pens, you could use paper and a pencil to do this, but a whiteboard is so useful because it will really help you to practice the skills of free motion quilting. And ripple quilting is simply rippling that quilting between the lines, stitching up and down and up and down. So this is our basic ripple. And you can also practice drawing that, not just from left to right, but try it from right to left. Try doing it from top to bottom. Try doing it from bottom to top. And practice each drill. 10 to 20 times. It sounds a lot, it won't take you very long at all. And, um, and then, as I say, try doing it going in the opposite direction. Oh, it's not as easy. But when you're quilting your quilt and you need to switch directions, you'll be glad that you can do this. Whenever we're free motion quilting, we're gonna need to change our foot at the moment, I've got my quarter inch foot on, so I'm going to take that off and I'm going to replace it with a darning or free motion foot. This is the darning or free motion foot for my Benina, and this has a cutout at the front. I find this gives me the best view when I'm free motion quilting, but you can get them with a full hoop, um, which also do the same job. <clears throat> so I've just got that installed now. And I'm also going to drop the feed dogs. The feed dogs are these teeth here. And there's usually a button or a lever on your sewing machine that will drop them away. And that means now that we can free motion stitch and we can sew in any direction. We're going to start with our first quick quilting motif, which is the ripple quilting. I've got my quilt sandwich here ready and it's really good practice to work between lines. Now in this example, I've got pieced lines, but I could just have a calico sandwich um, that has lines drawn that I can work between, and that's also gonna work really well. So when you start quilting, you wanna drop your presser foot, and I'm holding on to the top thread while I do this. And what I'm gonna do is drop the needle into my work, and then I'm going to lift the needle back out again. I'm going to lift my presser foot and just bring my work towards me. And if I pull, see that loop? That's the bobbin thread. So I'm going to grab a hold of it. So now I've got the bobbin and the top thread on the top surface of my work. Whenever you start a line of quilting, you always want to start with the top and the bobbin thread on the surface to avoid a bird's nest or snarls on the back of your work. So now I'm gonna take them to the back of my work, drop my presser foot, and then still holding on to both of those threads, I'm gonna drop the needle back down into my work. Now from that position, I can start to quilt and I'm gonna stitch a few very, very short, small stitches almost on the spot to help secure my thread. So in order to do that, I'm going to run my machine quite fast and I'm going to move my fabric quite slowly. And that just creates five or six micro stitches. They are very, very difficult to unpick. They're not just going to come undone. So that's securing my work. So now I can start to quilt. Remember that ripple stitching is stitching down to the line and then back up to the top down and up, down and up. So let's stitch that. So the trick when you start quilting is to run your machine quite fast 
and to move your fabric quite slowly. And that way you'll form nice consistent stitches. Now my hand's getting in the way, but I'm not gonna move it while I'm stitching. I'm gonna stop my machine completely, reposition my hands, and actually while I'm there, I'm just gonna trim those first threads off and get rid of them. And I'm gonna reposition my hands into a new position, and then I'm gonna start quilting again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my machine for a couple of stitches on the spot before I start moving the quilt sandwich. So I'm gonna run my machine and then I'll start moving. And that helps to create an imperceptible start and stop. Now don't forget that you can vary the density of your quilting by stitching your lines closer together. So in this example, still ripple quilting. This is now matchstick quilting. So I'm quilting my lines really, really close together. And that creates a much denser and much flatter look to the quilting. But also, <clears throat> I'm stitching forward and back at the moment, I can also stitch my ripple quilting from side to side. So once you've got the hang, <clears throat> have a go at stitching from side to side. This is harder. It doesn't feel quite so natural and you may have to reposition your hands. Think about all the lovely quilting motifs that you could make using ripple quilting. And now I'm gonna go back to up and down. And if you want nicely echoed lines that are a similar distance apart, just use the edge of your foot and run the edge of that foot along the last line of stitching and that will help to keep you on a straight and narrow path. So this is our very first quick quilting motif, the ripple quilting. And when we want to finish, we're just gonna do a few tiny stitches on the spot and then lift our needle and cut our threads. So there's your first quick quilting motif, ripple quilting.